Hey there gang, it is time for another comic book unboxing video, and if you look at this box right here, what we have inside is some stuff that I'm pretty sure is not in your comic book collection, at least not for most of you. So, what do we got? What are we going to take a look at today? Well, you have to stick around and find out, but I guarantee if you like comic books, if you truly do love the art form, well, we're going to have some fun. Hey there, Bubby. Welcome to Shanghala. My name is Duke, and this is an unboxing video, and it's a little bit different. Normally, I tell you when I do one of these that I have no idea what is inside the box, such as the one you're looking at here, that I have been given to grade for sale on eBay. But in this case, I do happen to know what's in here, or if not every individual issue, I know the general genre that we will be looking at. And I know because the boss gave me this box and said, do you think these will sell as singles on eBay and I said well you know I'll take a look I think some of them certainly will if any you know I think are not worthy of singles then I will set those aside as multi-book lots so we're going to be making that decision right now we'll be going through the box together and I'm going to be up front with you, this may not be the video for most of you. <laughs> because some of you are not going to have any interest in what I'm about to take a, a look at here. And, you know, hey, that's okay. It'll hurt me with the algorithm to be kind of up front with that, uh, probably. But, you know, I don't have any great hope of ever being monetized uh, on this channel. So I'm really more concerned with just being a good host than I am with trying to monetize your views. So I'll let you know right up front, you may want to bail because what we're going to look at is a whole bunch of this. <laughs> Funny animal comics, a lot of a lot of Disney, a lot of Looney Tunes, a lot of other stuff. So we're going to take a look and, and see, uh, you know, what we've got here. And I don't know a lot about a lot of these books. So, you know, you may have to leave a comment, you know, in the section down below. Hey, that's the first this, the first that, or, or whatever. I'll give you an example. It wasn't that long ago that we had a uh, a Nancy and Sluggo book, or was it a Sparkler Comics or something? And to put it up as a uh, as a single. No, no, I think I put it up as a lot, like three or four Nancy books in a lot, and it went crazy. And I couldn't figure out why it was why you know the bids were were coming in fast and furious, and why the price went so high. Well, it was the first appearance of the Peanuts, you know, Charlie Brown, Snoopy, and the gang in comic books. So, <laughs> so there's a lot about this type of book that I just don't know. These all predate me. I was born in 67, started reading comic books, well, at least as far as I can remember, around 75, 76. That's probably when I started buying them for myself with my own allowance money. But I, you know, comic books have been a part of my life really, you know, longer than my memory goes back. Uh, but these books all pretty much predate me. So, so here we go, comic album. And these are all Dell and Gold Key pretty much. And I think those will do well. Woody Woodpecker just does not do well for us at all. And I think that's pretty much a dead property. You know, anybody under, well, you know, I'm 54. No, my, take it back. I'm 53. <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself. Um, but anybody under 40 anyway, do you even know who Woody Woodpecker is? You know, it's a kind of a dead property, like I said. So that will probably go in a lot, especially because it's got that little nick right there. So... So yeah, that's a that's a book that's probably going to go in a lot. So I think I'll put that up here. The ones I think will be singles, we'll put there. And, and see, the thing is, even the books that I'm going to sell as singles, these are books that we're going to look at here that all have really solid value as far as the price guides go. But when it comes to selling them on eBay, at least our experience is mostly they don't do very well for us. Um, now, this could be different. Uh, Cave Kids, Hanna-Barbera. Interesting. It's not in great condition, but it's number two. We'll try that as a single. Casper 73, I think we can try that as a single. Chip and Dale, not sure the issue number. Number 30, I think... Well, this will depend. I'll make another lot here. <laughs> another another pile, I mean. I'll make another pile. I'll do a, a... And some of this is off screen. You can't really see what I'm doing. But the ones that I think will be singles oh, up over here, I've got the ones that I think definitely are going to go in lots. And the ones that will probably go in a lot if I have enough similar to it. I don't want to make just a total random lot. 
Um, but if I've got a, you know, three or four Chip and Dale comic books, at least I'll make a lot. If not, I may do that as a single. All right, Bullwinkle is still fairly popular. Don't know what issue number this is. Again, you know, the thing with the Dell and the gold key books, this is number two, is that they, uh, they tended not to have issue numbers at least on the cover. So here, well, here's a Bugs Bunny, but it's got a hole in it. Huh. I think I'm going to put that in the possible lot. Bugs, again, Bugs Bunny, I think these Bugs Bunny books are, are great, and the art in them is generally, you know, nice and fun. But, um, yeah, that one has a hole in it. This one has a spine roll. This one's a little better, but we'll still put it there. This one's kind of rough. We'll put it in probably a lot. This one, in fairly decent shape. I think we'll try that one as a single. Porky Pig in Space, I think. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> that is genuinely funny. Frying eggs on the... Uh, on the rocket blast. Never mind that none of that's going to work in a vacuum, but <laughs> hey, whatever. This one looks in pretty neat shape. Bugs Bunny Halloween Fun. I think that one's definitely a single. Bugs Bunny Showtime. This one could be the first issue because, well, no, it's Bugs Bunny Showtime 86. Never mind. Uh, the reason I say that is when Dell transferred over to Gold Key, at least some of these properties here. And if you don't know the story, uh, Western Publishing uh, used to package the books for Dell Publishing. Dell was the, the publisher, uh, and uh, Western was the packager. They put together the books, and they actually held the license. Around 1962, they split. Dell went off, decided to start making its own books, and then um, Western because they had the licenses, they started publishing books under the Gold Key imprint or uh, for books that were distributed directly to department stores and things like that. They used the Whitman label. Uh, but anyway, the first issues tended to have of the Gold Key, once it transferred from, from Dell to Gold Key, tended to have this, you know, it wasn't just Bugs Bunny anymore. It was Bugs Bunny Showtime. And this could be actually still the first Gold Key issue because it is... It is 1962, so for some collectors, if that's the first gold key, Bugs Bunny, that will have kind of an extra premium. And believe it or not, there are there are people who collect specifically these types of books. The other thing, too, is they, they tend to have um, good collecting value with what I call normies, you know, folks who who don't necessarily collect comic books, aren't all into the superheroes, but they like Bugs Bunny or, or you know, Daffy Duck or Elmer or whatever. So this is another probably early gold key. Ooh, introducing Pebbles. Could that be the first Pebbles appearance in comics? Is there any chance she appeared in comics before the TV show? I don't know, but I think we'll do that as a single with Pebbles and Bam Bam. We'll do that one as a single. All right, let's take our next, our next little stack here. Some more pebbles and bam bam. Felix, now I don't think Felix is going to sell all that well. I really don't. I really don't. What is this? What's well, Felix number three? But. Uh, I'm going to put that in the probably lot. This one I, I would sell as a single. Donald Duck and especially Uncle Scrooge, those are kind of the exceptions to the rule. Those sell pretty well. But this one's pretty low grade, so... And that one's pretty low grade. And this one's... kind of eh. That one's kind of eh. I like this continued inside, like if you if you couldn't figure it out. But there was a short while here that they started the stories on the cover. Uh, and I guess that was an idea that if you if a kid picked it up, you know, and was intrigued enough to read all that and then to read inside, well, then you're, you know, 80, 90 percent of the way to the sale. I don't know. It's a little beat up there. This one's better condition. We'll do this one as a single for sure. 
This one not, it's got a big rip right here, I think. Or is it just a scratch? No, it's a genuine rip. Do you see that? And we will do all of these, I think, as singles. I actually collect um, Donald Duck and, old, and Uncle Scrooge books. I got into them during the Gladstone years, if you remember the company uh, Gladstone. That one's a little beat up. And this one feels thin. This one's decent. Donald's about to get it right in the ass. Right in the tuchus. Huckleberry Hound. Huckleberry does not sell well at all. But I think Chuckleberry Tales, memory serves, is the first. That's number 18. But what is it? Is it around... It's October 62, so that could be the first gold key. I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up. If it's the first gold key book, I'll do it as a single. If not, Huckleberry doesn't really sell that well. That's going to go on a lot. Grandma Duck, that's a four-color book. Now, if you're not familiar, four-color was a Dell series, and that, that wasn't actually the name of the series. We just call it that today because the first issues in this numbering sequence had somewhere on the cover it would say four-color or four-color comics. But these were essentially a series of one-shots, and if you open them up, look in the Indicia, and I don't know how you pronounce it, but I pronounce it Indicia, which is this publishing information, usually on the bottom of the first page or uh, you know, inside cover. These days, I think Marvel and DC both have them you know, in the, on like the last page. But it gives you all the publishing information. And so the title of this book is Walt Disney's Grandma Ducks Farm Friends, number 1,279. While there were not 1,278 previous issues of Walt Disney's Grandma Ducks Farm Friends... That's a mouthful. That's hard to say. Some cat scratches right here. I assume that's what that is because they're all... Well, no, that would be a pretty big paw, wouldn't it? <laughs> they're more like Wolverine marks. Uh, Wolverine probably saw this and didn't think much of it. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, they were each, you know, basically one shots. You know, every every issue was a different, you know different title, different book, different character, and they weren't always published sequentially. You know, it could be that, you know, 1,285 might have been on the stands before 1,279. Um, and I think there were about 1,600, more or less, books in this series. I forget exactly how many, but this was nearing the end anyway. This was, you know, from the from the late 40s, early 50s, all the way up until the split in 62. So, uh, so yeah, you know, if you see a high issue number, and this was a Dell series that did have the issue number on the cover. You see a high issue number like that, and you know that you're looking at what today we call the four color series, which is just really a cataloging and collecting way of grouping these books together so that you didn't have. 40 bazillion different entries. They were just all entered under one title. So I think that's going to go in a lot. Huckleberry Hound, we've talked about that. Doesn't sell very well. Huckleberry Hound, again, if you're under 40, have you ever even heard of Huckleberry Hound? I grew up as a kid in central Maine. And uh, back then, you know, cable just meant, you know, getting your regular channels in clearly. And then it, it included getting uh, two channels out of Boston, channel 56 and 38. They were UHF channels. And those channels played cartoons in the afternoon. So I would rush home from school and watch uh, all of the cartoons. And then also besides cartoons, there were things like Star Trek and the Brady Bunch and all that kind of stuff. Jetsons, I think, will do pretty well. Um, featuring Rosie the Robot. Uh, but anyway, that's where I discovered Huckleberry Hound. And uh, that Jetsons is pretty rough. And this Jetsons is pretty rough. And this Jetsons is kind of okay. I'll take a closer look at these uh, later. If like one of these ones is like the first issue and I've put it in the rough pile that I'm going to sell us a lot, I will pull it out. But anyway, a lot of these uh, cartoons and characters, that's how I discovered them. And I wonder how kids today discover them. These cartoons aren't played on television. 
Saturday morning isn't a thing anymore. Um, they're not on any of the, really, the streaming services. And you think they would be. You would think that in addition to having a DC section, uh, HBO Max would have a Hanna-Barbera section with all of these cartoons. Looney Tunes doesn't do that well for us either, and that one's kind of rough, so we'll put that over here. What did somebody draw on this one, or is it a stamp? Is it a drawing or a stamp? It looks like a stamp because it's, it's backwards. Billy shoots. I have no idea what that's all about. These are kind of rough. And I mean, they're 10 cent books. They're, they're old. Oh, well, this is different. We'll definitely, uh, definitely sell. This is a single. That one got mixed in there somehow. It is Magnus, Magnus, number 16. Nobody's doing Magnus right now. Magnus and Dr. Solar and Turek and all those, they are owned by Classics Media, which is owned by DreamWorks, which is owned by NBC Universal, which is owned by Comcast. So it's kind of the same corporate hierarchy as DC, owned by Warner, owned by AT&T. And I've sort of backed the idea of Comcast launching a Universal Comics line because they own a bunch of characters like Magnus, like the Lone Ranger and Lassie, like uh, all of the Harvey characters, Casper, Richie Rich, things like that, like the underdog uh, characters, the, the J. Ward properties, that all would be pretty, you know, pretty good and popular in comics. They've got a lot of other adventure uh, series things as well. And uh, right now they're dead properties. You know, they're, they're not... They're not licensed for anything because nobody knows the damn things exist anymore. But if you had them in comic books, and especially if you put them in those, you know, if you put those comic books in vending machines outside of Walmarts and things like that, so that uh, kids knew the properties existed again. Once the kids know, the parents will know, and so the you know then then you know merchandisers will be interested in licensing those characters for bed sheets, lunch boxes, toys, games, what have you. But then, you know, you don't see Richie Rich or Casper or any kind of merchandise like that because, again, they are the dead IP. So that's my, <laughs> that's my stump speech. If anybody from Comcast happens to be tuning in, uh, why don't you go ahead and launch the Universal Comics line? And you know what? You can hire me to run it, too. <laughs> uh, Mighty Mouse in Outer Space, you know, this... this Spine is bent, but I bet you that's worth selling as a single. Adventures of Mighty Mouse. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. Now these new funnies books, just like I said, uh, uh, Donald Duck, uh, not Donald Duck, uh, Woody Woodpecker. They don't do well for us at all. Uh, you know, so Walter Lance new funnies, Woody Woodpecker, Andy Panda. Those are definite lots because they're just they're just not going to do that well. All right, this is probably going to be a longish kind of video because I'm I'm just barely halfway through this box. I'm a little chatty this time out. Alvin and his pals in Merry Christmas with Clyde Crash Cup and Leonardo. We get a two-inch bottom spine split and a one-inch at the top. If that was in better condition. I might try and sell it as a single, but I think. I think it's going to go in a lot. Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse doesn't do anywhere near as well as Donald Duck. He's almost not worth selling as a single. But I'm going to go with the... Def well, no, you know what? Because I got a blown staple here, I'll put that and that in a lot. And this one I will put as a single because it's a little better condition. I'll do that one as a single, although we're getting into the Silver Age. This one's in pretty nice shape. It's a Mickey Mouse Club comic. I don't know what that... <laughs> how that differentiates it from a regular comic, but... Uh -huh. Here we go. Pluto. Pluto Battle the Giant Ant. Pluto, it should be Pluto Battles the Giant... Oh, no. Mickey and Pluto Battle. So it's... Okay. Sorry, I was just reading that line. Never mind. I'll cut that part out. <laughs> I was having a, a grammar Nazi moment there. Uh, Mickey on Spooks Island. Well, I want that book. 
Here we go, Nancy and Sluggo. So you got to check. You got any peanuts in there? This might be a late. Yes, you've got some peanuts in there. So you definitely want to sell this one as a single. I learned that lesson. Learn that lesson. Popeye. I don't think Popeye does that great, but I think this could be worth it. Here's some Popeye. Got a big stain there, though, so maybe not worth it. I don't know. Is it a giant one? Quick Draw McGraw. Fun type roundup. That's November, probably 62, so it's an early gold key. November 62. Yep, we'll do that one as a single. Oh, we found another adventure book. Space Family Robinson Lost in Space. So do you know the story on this one? I, I, I am getting chatty this video. <laughs> so the video that's likely to have the fewest views because it doesn't have any real superhero stuff uh, is the one that's going to end up being the longest just because I can't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> so anyway... Um, Gold Key had a, a, a series called Space Family Robinson, uh, and or I can't remember if it started during the Dell years or not. But it, at any rate, when CBS launched its Lost in Space series, they effectively stole the idea from the comic book. And so there was a lawsuit, and the lawsuit ended up being settled in such a way that the comic book got to use the Lost in Space title, even though, you know, apart from the name Robinson Family, the books are pretty different. And I don't think there's any Dr. Smith or anything like that in the comics. But the, the concept was close enough that Gold Key Western effectively won the suit in so much as it got to uh, use the Lost in Space title on its comic books so that theoretically, I guess they would sell better because kids would think they were tied in with the uh, TV show. And as you can see here, they they kind of weren't. And the art's pretty basic, frankly. But, oh, look, a Vulcan. <laughs> Man, that would have confused all the kids. Like, oh my, you know, not only is this Space Family Robinson not the one I'm used to watching on TV, they've got Vulcans in there. So, hmm, interesting. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's a story on that. What the hell is this? This looks like, well, no, it's not a giveaway because it's got a, it's got a price tag, but Shifts Shoes presents Masked Raider. Bluebird Comics. I don't know anything about this. This I'm going to have to look up. And I think this I'm definitely, definitely going to sell as a single. Doesn't just as printed in the USA by Charlton Press. So it's a Charlton comic book. But it does look like it's some kind of a shoe store premium. But again, it's confusing because it's got a price tag on it. So do they actually sell it in the shoe stores? So strange. I'll have to look that up. Are there any Shifts shoes still around in your part of the country or world, wherever you're from? Do you have a Shifts shoes? Uh, that spooky spook town I would probably sell as a single except for that big split. I hope you can see. I can't really tell if I can... If I'm holding this on the camera or not. It's number 14, but a little rough. Here's another Space Family Robinson. Here's another one. This one's in much better shape. I love the covers on the uh, on the Gold Key books, but you know they were always disappointing because you open them up and the art inside's pretty static. And at least this one has rounded word balloons. A lot of the Gold Key and Dell books had these square word balloons that just to me, they were very off-putting. They looked very inorganic, I guess is the right word. Walter Lance Space Mouse. Huh. Well, I think, although Walter Lance books don't generally sell well, maybe Space Mouse is something I'll give a, I'll give a shot to. That's number four. Here's another Space Mouse in comic album in fairly decent shape. 
I mean, decent, we're talking, you know, six, maybe five, five, maybe five, but decent enough. Oh, uh, well, this book is definitely, definitely a single. We've sold a few of these. Oh, sorry, Batman. I, oh, now I've knocked him over. Here we go. So we've sold a few of these uh, Spaceman books, and uh, they, they do quite well. Although somebody has outlined the logo in pen. I wonder what issue number this is. Six. They also drew with pen on the inside cover. Goddamn little hooligan, little hellion. Wish you'd written your name in the book, kids, so that I'd know who to yell at. Tom and Jerry, Tom and Jerry books don't do very well for us, but that one's in fairly decent shape, so maybe I'll try it. Tom and Jerry Fun House, February, probably 63. 63, so it's a, it's a fairly early gold key. We'll do that one as a single. Tweety and Sylvester, eh, maybe single. MGM's Tom and Jerry Conks. Hey, have you seen the Tom and Jerry movie that's out right now with... What's her name? Chloe Grace Yamaloba Hoo Hoo Parala. The kid who played Kit Girl. <laughs> I can't remember her name. She was really good in it, actually. Uh, she had some nice comic timing, although, you know, there were a lot of areas where you could tell it was like, you know, they just pointed a camera at her face and they're like, okay, reaction shot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, she did really well. Had very good comic timing. Uh, the whole thing was really good, really well done. Uh, it hasn't got great reviews, but if you've got HBO Max, um, I recommend watching that. It'll only be on HBO Max for just a short time while it's uh, simultaneously in the theaters. And then I guess it'll probably go to just theaters only, and then it'll come back sometime down the road. But... Um, it was really quite good. I enjoyed it. And actually, you know, the, like the first five minutes, I laughed out loud like six times. <laughs> so uh, it was it was very good. Although the other thing, too, is that um, uh, Zoe, Grace, Olivia, Chloe, Klaba, Huba, Nunu, <laughs> whatever her name is, um, I, uh, there were, she made a couple of references in there that I'm like, okay, you, you're reading from the script because there's no way somebody your age has any idea what it is you're referencing, this, this pop culture reference. And, and none of the audience, you know, the target audience, I think, would, would know what the joke was, what she was referencing. Uh, I wish I could remember them off the top of my head, but you watch it and you tell me if you don't spot them. There's a couple, there was a couple of them that were like really glaring. It's like, I don't believe you even know who that is. Maybe your character does, but I still don't believe it. All right, Walt Disney's Comics and Stories, that'll sell well. This is, this is a thinner book. You know, and Marvel's for a while. I don't know if you realize this, but Marvel's for a while during the late 90s, early 2000s. They were a good quarter inch shorter than all of the other books. And actually, Marvel, uh, back during the timely era in the late 40s, early 50s, their books were thinner than, you know, unless every copy I've ever got has been trimmed, but uh, they were thinner. So these are all singles. Walt Disney's Comics and Stories. I mean, they won't do great. They'll do five, six bucks each, might get up into the 10 range. This one should do well, 25th anniversary issue. It's Scamp. Do you remember Scamp? They don't do much with Scamp anymore. More. Uh, you know, and one of the things I think hurt um, Gold Key's Disney comics is like, like this. All their covers really look like clip art covers. You know, at least during the Dell years, it looked like an actual, you know, drawing for that cover. But once you get into the gold key era, they all look kind of like just clip art stuck together. This one, even with that damage, I still think is worth a single. 250. 252. 234. 
right. Boom, 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 boom. So yeah, I think all these Walt Disney comics and stories books are worth selling as singles. Wendy, Witch World, number two. Yeah, that's it's not great shape, but as number two, I think it's worth it. Woody, now Woody, I'm sorry, Woody, but nobody likes you. <laughs> Although this one, this Woody County Fair, again, October 62, so that's probably the first. You know, it's Woody Woodpecker number 73, but that's probably the first gold key issue. October 62, it's got that extra title. It's a, it's a big, thick book. Probably the first gold key. So that one at least is worth doing as a single. And see again, here you go, a clip art cover. That one's probably also an early gold key. So we'll do that one as a single. But this one, but no, but, that doesn't even look like a window. It looks like Andy Panda's like in a painting on a wall and we're doing a road runner kind of, kind of breaking the plane there. Uh, Trump de Loyal. <laughs> uh, I said Trump de Loyal, and YouTube just flagged this video as being a uh, a Trump video and just banned it. <laughs> Yogi Bear. Hey there, Yogi Bear. My little buddy, Boo Boo. Mr. Ranger won't like that, Yogi. Number nine. July, September 62, so this would be one of the last Dell books. I don't think, and again, I don't think anybody under 30 or 40 knows who Yogi Bear is. We'll see, that might be a, these might be a, a lot if I've got enough of them, and I think I do here. This one's got a little bit of a spine roll. Ba -ba -dum. We're getting near the end of it, kids. We are getting near the end of it. Now, Yogi Bear Visits the UN. I think that one's going to be a single. And this is actually a four-color book. Four-color, 1349. <laughs> Combat. Well, that's, that's kind of out of the genre there. We'll do that one as a single. Boom, 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 boom. Uncle Scrooge, the Looney Lunar Gold Rush. That's definitely a single. All these Uncle Scrooges will be singles. Boom, ba -dum, boom. Isle of Golden Geese. Flip on the dollars in the salad. I don't know why I did that in French. <laughs> Rug Riders in the Sky. <laughs> So far in No Safari. These are really punalicious covers, aren't they? There's 240 of Walt Disney's Comics and Stories. All right, we've got one last stack. Do you think we'll have anything super duper exciting in this last stack? Oh, yes. Right there off the top. Super Goof. You know what? If uh, if I was Marvel, with Disney owning Marvel, you know how, uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago, DC did uh, a bunch of crossovers with the DC heroes and the Looney Tunes characters. And then I think separately, they also had a Looney Tunes covers uh, month. If I was Marvel, I would do a... Um, I would do a, a, like a crossover month, at least on the covers with Super Goof uh, teaming up with you know, various Marvel heroes. You know, Super Goof and Thor. And you could maybe you could have a couple of, like, actual special issues where he's, you know, in the story as well. But uh, they'll probably do something like that once, once Marvel and Disney become a little more integrated. And actually, speaking of special issues, you could probably maybe get Don Rosa to come out of retirement, depending on how his... I think he retired because of his vision... But if his vision is holding up, um, you could get um, Don Rosa to do a special, a special um, Donald Duck Howard the Duck crossover. 
I, that would that would sell gangbusters. I bet you. I bet you that would do really well. But anyway, that's what I would do if I ran the world. Hanna Barbera bandwagon. Well, that's a single for sure. Hey there, it's Yogi Bear. I'm going to do that one as a single. Because I'm guessing that's probably an early gold key. What does it say here? Does it give me a month? It doesn't even give me a month. Well, it says 64, so it's not that early. I just like the cover. All right, so that's a single for sure. That's a single. Oh, it's got a stamp on it. Somebody stuck a Christmas stamp on there. I tell you, kids back in the day, they were little hoodlums, little vandals. Flintstones bigger and bolder. Whoops, I knocked over Batman again. Oh, well, we'll just get him right out of the way this time. So November, probably 62. This is a very early gold key flint. Oh, it's a number one, too. Bigger and bolder, number one, November 62. Yeah, that's definitely a single. Uncle Scrooge and Money. Money is the guest star. Okay, that is some heinous-looking Huey, Dewey, and Louie's there. My God, that's awful. That kind of looks like the most recent versions we've seen of them. That, um, And that one actually looks like just the same one, just like clip-arted in twice. Or Photoshopped, we would say, today. Here's Uncle Scrooge keeping fit with his money bags. Walt Disney Christmas Parade, and this is a, uh, <laughs> a four-color, 1190, Donald Duck invents the wheel, <laughs> Cave Donald. <laughs> All right, well, that's it, boys and girls. That is that stack. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you had fun. If you stuck around, uh, maybe this video wasn't for you. You probably cut out after the first couple of minutes, but... That's okay. Like I said, I, I'm having fun. <laughs> and so you having fun too is just a side benefit. <laughs> anyway, until the next video, I want to thank you for watching. And until then, goodbye, good luck, and please be good to each other.